Hi, moms. I'm excited to introduce you today to Dr. Golnaz Sadi. She is an internist and a primary care physician. She specializes in weight loss, has a teenage son, and I'm very excited to have her with us today. So, Dr. Golnaz Sadi, thank you for being thank here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Good. Um, I really wanted to start off our conversation today talking about weight loss because I know for so many women, they feel like they're eating right and they're exercising. They just can't take off some of that weight. Um, when they come to you, how do you kind of differentiate if it's a hormonal shift or what's causing that? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And I do have a ton of patients who are around my age. They're perimenopausal in their 40s. They've now started seeing a primary care doctor because they have 10 pounds, 20 pounds to lose, and they really are struggling. Um, a lot of them have done everything under the sun, from keto to intermittent fasting to Weight Watchers, and they've done, done it all and they can't lose it. And there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, as we've probably like all heard about, once you reach 40, the whole soul cycle berries is not the best idea. You don't want to do cardiovascular. <laughs> you want to do weight training yes. three times a week. You want to really go in there and try to get as much weights as progressive overload. You want to be sleeping well. You want to be eating well. And once you've done all that and you still can't lose the weight, that's when you come to your primary care doctor and say, hey, I need some help. And that's right. kind of where we're at. That's where we're at. And that's where so many moms are at different stages in their life, whether they're you know, um, after baby or perimenopausal or postmenopausal. So um, let's talk about GLP ones because they are so popular and um, you are a weight loss specialist. And mm -hmm. I would love to know for our moms and we would love to know, you know, how you feel about those and what exactly are they? So the GLP ones are great. Um, they kind of boomed in 2023 and 2024 when Ozempic and Monjuro became popular. But quite frankly, they've been around for a really long time. So in 2017, Ozempic came around and it was a diabetic medication. And late 2022, the FDA said, you know what, we're going to, through the pharmacological world, we're going to approve it for weight loss. And they rebranded it as Wigovi. So if you hear Ozempic, Ozempic is for diabetics. Wigovi is the same exact medication and it's for weight loss. And the brand name for that or the generic name for that is semi-glutide. Then a year later, we have Monjuro, which became super popular as kind of like Ozempic 2.0. It's bigger, it's faster weight loss, um, less side effects. That one, Monjuro is the diabetic, is for diabetics. And then it was rebranded as Zepbound for weight mm. loss. Um, they're weekly injections that you do. They're GLP-1s and GIPs for Monjuro. Monjuro has two different components okay. and the weight loss is incredible. Good to hear, but you, you do have to do the weight training and continue exercising when you're on the GLP-1s, correct? Absolutely. So you've heard of Ozempic face and that's where yeah. people think like, oh my God, Ozempic particularly burns all the fat in my face. And that's just not true. With any kind of weight loss, especially as we get older, the fat comes off of the face. Um, and the muscles also get, you know, if you're having weight loss, you're going to lose muscle, which is why it's important to do weight training, especially in your 40s um, and after. And for bone density as well, yeah. because I know what is the baseline for women having the bone density test? Is it 40? It's 50 and 55. Uh, yeah. The I've had nine, but yeah. I've, well, okay, I'm not 40. <laughs> yeah, you could have the 40 Maybe if you I'm want, 50. but it's a little later. But you know, yeah. if you're doing the weight training yeah. and you're having your calcium either in pills or in food, ideally in food, then you're going to be yeah. okay. Okay. And so if you were to give women, you know, one task, you know, that you felt would be really important, you know, to them. Um, as far as seeing, you know, their internist, their primary care physician, since they probably only see their gynecologist until their children are older, um, what would that be? Um, really trust your primary care doctor. So I get a lot of ladies in their 40s, and it takes a minute for them to trust me. It takes a minute for them to admit that, hey, like, I may not be obese, but I'm still uncomfortable with that 10 pounds. So just having that relationship where you can come to them and say, I don't like this weight over here, or I'm feeling, you know, my joints hurt and I'm 40. Is that normal? 
having yeah. a primary care doctor where you can build a relationship with them, be honest with them and just have them to help you throughout. Yeah. That's, that's a great, great point because I know that I only had a gynecologist until my girls got older. And then I started going to Dr. Tassa, who was here, um, which was their primary care physician, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's kind of when you start really testing the cholesterol and all those tests right. are so important. So um, if you were going to give your mom's one takeaway test that you think is the most important, what would it be? So this is something that's not always tested, but I do think at some point, not necessarily in your 20s, maybe in your late 30s and early 40s, you should get tested for inflammatory markers. Right. Um, and that's another thing that GLPs have been tested and shown to do really well is just decreased that's inflammation right. in the body. Because mm -hmm. just inflammation can lead to dementia, it can lead to cardiovascular Yes. demise it can lead to so many other things other than just feeling puffy and having joint pain so if you can ask your doctors to test your inflammatory markers that'll help you kind of figure out how aggressive you want to be in treating other things as well right okay and so what is what inflammatory markers are they like what are the um the main so there's a c-reactive protein um one that's specific for whole body inflammation and one that's cardiovascular okay. specific. And then there's an ESR, but your doctors would know. And I think they can tailor it to what you think would be, what they think would be the best for you. Great. I, I will say that um, before we wrap it up, I did go see Dr. Sadie because I had like a little pain here and I thought, oh, maybe it's my liver or something. I'm not even sure if my liver is there, but um, UTI. <laughs> so many <laughs> women, you know, have UTIs, you know, before baby, after baby, and menopause is like a big uh, UTI, urinary tract infection um, thing. So um, the D-mannose, which is a, a natural substance, which she had told me about, and then they add cranberry to that now is really good. Um, so, you know, it's just really good to get into your doctor when you're not feeling your best and have those annual checkups, but don't wait for the annual checkups yeah. have them along the way. Right. We can help with everything like vitamins that can yeah. prevent chronic UTIs. There's many reasons to come and see us, not yes. just weight loss, yes. but many reasons. <laughs> so Dr. Sadie, we talked about GLP-1s for weight loss, but are there any other benefits that they have that it would be wonderful for our moms or anyone? GLP-1s are really coming out to be an incredible medication for so many different things. Um, some of them, the Monjuro, Zepbound, or Terzepatide, all three, same thing, um, has been FDA approved for sleep apnea. It's showing many cardiovascular benefits and getting some kind of approval for just cardiovascular, not just weight loss. Um, there's studies currently in animals, but still studies about how the GLPs help with, GLP-1s help with breast cancer how mm. animals with breast cancer after using GLP-1s, the breast cancer shrunk. So I mm. do think that there's so many other benefits that we don't know yet, but yeah. we are going to learn about as they become more prevalent. Um, inflammation, I have a ton of patients who are on it and will say, you know what? I'm not as achy in the mornings in my knees and my back. I have a lot of patients who are on it and they don't crave alcohol mm. or drugs anymore, which is amazing, like a side benefit and feel just- I kind of did like a- what? No. Yeah. <laughs> Double take. No, I have heard that yeah. <laughs> about the alcohol because mm -hmm. it takes away the cravings for alcohol and, and cigarettes and cigarettes, which is amazing. Okay. Yeah. I do like my mommy wine. <laughs> yes. It doesn't take it <laughs> all away. away. We can have our mommy take wine. It all away. No, I know. But and cigarettes, I mean, so there's so many um, alternative benefits. Yeah. You know? It's like off label. They say when you use a medication off label for different things. Um, well, that's, that's amazing to hear. And that's yeah. wonderful um, news. So thank you for that. Well, I'm so excited to have you thank here you. and on our panel and with our longevity webinars um, and our membership, we offer all these amazing doctors that specialize in, in so many different areas. And we're so happy to have you today. And thank, thank you so much. And thank um, you. we'll see you soon. Okay, moms, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed meeting all of our amazing experts that covered nutrition, weight loss, red light therapy, meditation, primary care, and so many other things just for you.